We are currently looking at the digital root locus, which is used for designing a digital controller with the direct digital design approach. In a previous video, we have seen how to improve the closed loop transient response by using lead compensation. In this video, we look at how to improve the steady state response of the closed loop system using lag compensation. With lag compensation, we add a pole and a zero to the controller, with the pole to the right of the zero, and both relatively close to z equal to 1. The purpose of lag compensation is to improve the steady state error of the closed loop system. To understand what this means, let's look at the digital control system configuration. The digital controller calculates the plant input, where we use the discrete equivalent plant model in this configuration. The plant output is subtracted from the reference input to form the error signal, which is the input to the controller. For the steady state response, we are interested in the steady state value of the error signal in response to a certain reference input signal. We can understand the idea of lag compensation by looking at this conceptual example. This plant has two real poles and one real zero as shown in purple. The root locus for a proportional controller is shown in green. This system is of type 0 and will have a finite steady state error in response to a step input. If we wish to decrease the steady state error, we could place a controller pole and 0 close to z equal to 1, with a pole to the right of the 0, as shown here in red. This will have the effect of reducing the steady state error. Since the controller pole and 0 are chosen close to each other, it would look like a pole that is almost cancelled by a 0 from the view of the rest of the root locus which means that the shape of the root locus would not change significantly. We can therefore design the proportional controller to achieve the desired transient response and then add lag compensation to improve the steady state response with the assumption that the addition of the lag compensation does not significantly alter the transient response. Note that lag compensation can be added to complex controller structures, not only to proportional controllers. A common controller design approach is to use lead compensation to achieve the desired transient response and then add lag compensation to achieve the desired steady state response. To illustrate lag compensation, let's work through an example. The plan for this example is given by the continuous time transfer function 1 divided by s times s plus 2. The sampling period we should use is 200 milliseconds. The transient specifications are that the step response should have an overshoot of 16.1% and a 2% settling time of less than or equal to 5 seconds. The plant has a pole at s equal to 0, so it is of type 1, and the closed loop system will therefore be able to follow a step reference input with a zero steady state error. With no additional controller poles at z equal to 1, the closed loop system would be able to follow a ramp reference input with a finite steady state error. The steady state specification is that the steady state error to a unit ramp input should be 1 divided by 6. To solve this problem, we will first design a controller to satisfy the transient specifications and then we'll add lag compensation to achieve the steady state specification. To satisfy the transient specifications, we start by determining the acceptable region in the z-plane for the dominant closed loop poles. The dominant continuous time closed loop poles can be written in terms of the damping and natural frequency as shown here. From the overshoot specification, we calculate the damping as 0.5. From the settling time specification, we calculate that the natural frequency should be greater than or equal to 1.6 radians per second. We now convert these specifications to the z-plane. The damping of 0.5 corresponds to a spiral in the z-plane as shown in green. The magnitude of the dominant poles in the z-plane is given by e to the power minus the damping times the natural frequency times the sampling period. From the setting time specification, we can see that the damping times the natural frequency should be greater than or equal to 0.8. This means that the magnitude of the poles in the z-plane should be less than or equal to 0.85 to 1, which is indicated by this red circle. The acceptable dominant closed loop poles therefore correspond to the part of the green curve that lies within the red circle. Next we discretize the plant. We have calculated the equivalent discrete plant model in a previous video as shown here. This plant has a zero at z equal to minus 0.8797, a pole at z equal to 1 
and a pole at z equal to 0 0.6703. We now go on to design a digital controller to satisfy the transient specifications. We first consider a proportional controller. The root locus for such a controller is shown here on the right. There is a locus to the left of the zero, a locus on the real line between the two poles, which breaks away and joins the real line far to the left of the zero. The curve corresponding to a damping of 0 0.5 is shown in light green, and the region corresponding to a setting time of 5 seconds or less is shown in light red. When we plot the root locus for the proportional controller, it appears that it is possible to choose acceptable closed-loop locations. It looks like the root locus crosses the constant damping curve on the edge of the red circle. To check if this point lies on the root locus, we use the angle condition. On the edge of the circle, the natural frequency is 1.6 radians per second, and we calculate the complex pole pair to be 0 0.8196 plus or minus j 0 0.2331. The sum of the angles at this pole, phi 1 minus theta 1 minus theta 2, equals minus 177.2 degrees, which means that this pole location is not quite on the root locus. To arrive at minus 180 degrees, we can increase the contribution of theta 1 and theta 2, which will happen if the pole is further to the left. We therefore try a natural frequency of 1.7 radians per second, which results in poles at 0 0.8074 plus or minus j 0 0.2448. For these poles, the angles sum to minus 180.7 degrees, which is close enough to minus 180 degrees. We can of course iteratively refine the natural frequency even more, but for the purpose of this example, we select these as the closed loop poles. We now calculate the proportional controller gain to place the closed loop poles in these locations. When we apply the magnitude condition, evaluated at the chosen closed loop poles, we arrive at a gain of 2.93. We have designed a proportional controller that satisfies the transient requirements. Let's check if the steady state specifications are also met. The steady state error in response to a unit ramp input should be 1 over 6, which means that the velocity error constant should be 6. The actual velocity error constant is calculated as 1 divided by t times the limit as z tends to 1 of z minus 1 times the controller transfer function times the discrete equivalent plant transfer function. This results in a value of 1.46, which is less than 6, which means that the steady state requirement is not met. We therefore add that compensation by adding a 0 at beta 1 and a pole at beta 2 to the proportional controller, with the pole further to the right than the 0. When we calculate the updated velocity error constant, we see that it is equal to the ratio of 1 minus beta 1 divided by 1 minus beta 2 times the original velocity error constant. The updated velocity error constant should be 6, which means that the ratio should be equal to 4.104. We now choose one of the parameters and calculate the other. The pole and 0 should be close to z equal to 1, so we choose beta 2 to be 0 0.99, and we calculate beta 1 to be 0 0.959. The controller updated with lag compensation is now given by this transfer function. Let's now look at the root locus of the plant with the lag controller. The plant 0 and 2 plant poles are shown in purple and the desired dominant closed loop poles in blue. We have added a pole and 0 close to z equal to 1 shown in red. Since the added pole and 0 are very close together, the root locus looks very similar to that of the plant with a proportional controller. If we zoom into the region close to z equal to 1, we see that there is a locus between the plant pole and the controller pole, which breaks away and joins the locus on the real axis to the left of the controller 0. There will be a non-dominant closed loop pole located somewhere on this part of the locus. We have the freedom to shift the controller pole and 0 to the left or to the right, since only the ratio between the pole and 0 is specified. If we shift the pole and 0 to the left, they will move further apart, which means that the change in the rest of the root locus will be more significant, and the transient specifications will not be met anymore. If we shift the pole and zero to the right, they will move closer together, which means that the change in the rest of the root locus will be less significant, but since the dominant closed loop poles will move closer to z equal to 1, and therefore become slower, 
the corrective action of this pull on the error signal will also become slower. The choice of the location of the controller pole and zero therefore amounts to a trade-off between their effect on the transient response and the speed of the corrective action in the error signal. Let's now simulate the response of the closed loop system. In this plot, we show the step response of the closed loop system with various different controllers. The cyan plot is the digital step reference input. The blue plot is the output of the analog plant for the proportional controller that has been designed to satisfy the transient specifications. We can see that the overshoot is close to the desired 16% and the settling time is close to the desired 5 seconds or less. Since the plant is type 1, the steady state error to a step input is 0 as expected. The orange plot is the output of the plant with the designed lag compensation added. We can see that the overshoot has increased, which means that the addition of lag compensation has influenced the transient response. If we shift the controller pole and zero closer to z equal to 1, then we obtain the green plot. We can see that since the pole and zero are closer together, their effect on the transient response is less significant. If we shift the controller pole and zero further away from z equal to 1, we obtain the red plot. We can see that since the pole and zero are now further apart, the effect on the transient response is more severe. Let's now look at the unit ramp response of the plant with the same set of controllers. It is evident that the proportional controller, the blue plot, and the lag controller with the pole and zero close to z equal to 1, the green plot, has a larger error than our designed lag controller, the orange plot, and the lag controller with the poles far from z equal to 1, the red plot. However, it is not very easy to analyze their performance in this plot, so we rather look at the error signal. Here we show the error signal for the closed loop systems in response to a unit ramp input. The blue plot is the error signal for the proportional controller, where we can see that the error remains unacceptably large. The orange plot is the error signal for our designed lag controller, where we can see that the error is reduced such that it reaches the acceptable error level at around 20 seconds. The green plot shows the error signal for the slow lag controller with its pole and zero close to z equal to 1. We can see that this controller has a very slow corrective action. The red plot shows the error signal for the fast lag controller with its pole and zero far from z equal to 1. We can see that it has a fast corrective response, but its transient response differs significantly from that of the proportional controller which is the desired response. In this video, we have looked at lag compensation, which is added to a controller to improve the steady state error response. For the example of this video, our designed controller does not satisfy the specifications. In practice, one would iteratively refine the controller until the closed loop response is acceptable. We would also typically use numerical software packages to draw the root locus instead of drawing it by hand as in this example.